Hi, welcome to EdCamp. My name is Mrs. McAllister. I'm from MLC and I teach special education. Today we're going to work on or work together and learn about student supports using educational online learning tools. So hopefully you have the Google link from the invite. If you could open it up and review the contents, it should look like this. Please know I want you to feel free to upload and share any lessons or assignments before, during, or after participation in the EdCamp session. Today, we're going to work on the sharing out of that Google Drive folder, and we're going to share about online educational software, instructional tools, and lesson assignment ideas. And then after, if you think of another lesson, please, again, share folders in the EdCamp folder for others to learn and get ideas. Now, this happens to be a Google slide. I use this when, for my Do Now and Agenda for my students. And so I created it another so I can put it into Schoology for each of the lessons. I found the kids liked it and that it was clear for them to understand, so I'm sharing it. You have the no understand do, and I always put in these Bloom's skills at the end. I You can change your own quote. You can edit your name. Um, if you want to change the images to make it more personalized or anything else, know that you can just click on this and it's all layered of text boxes and I would I would not share it with the kids because they can really mess it up. Um, make sure that the images you insert have a transparent background. Otherwise, it, it'll be white all the way around or whatever the color it is. Okay, so this is the first share educational tool. Now, if I go back to EdCamp, we are going to go to educational online programs. Now, these are all free. These two, the Read Theory and the Digital Read Works, these are assignment documents that I've created. You can edit them and use them as you want. You change my name, all of that, your account number. I was trying to save you time. The digital read works. You can do a lot of different literature skills and language skills. And it's like compare, contrast, text features, main ideas, inferencing skills. It also has writing. Read theory is more reading comprehension. They go in, they take a pre-quiz, and it, it puts them at a certain grade Lexile reading. And then all their articles after that are built on where, where they are so they can grow and progress. The only drawback of read theory for me is if the kids don't take it seriously, their scores tank, so therefore the grade level tanks and the articles are younger. So that's the, the only drawback. These both, Read Theory and Digital Reworks, both collect data for you. School Yourself is a math online interactive software that does algebra, geography, trig, calc, and stats. I like it because the kids buy into it. Um, they, they're focused when they're doing it. And what I like is it has an instructional video and then they have to work on an assignment that builds on that tutorial. And they're very engaged in it. So I would recommend this. The only thing is it does not collect data yet. There is a way to embed it into Schoology. I have not yet been able to get it to work, but I figure eventually I will. If you try it and you get it to work, please share. Again, sharing additional educational online programs. This is a Google Doc. Please feel free to open this and share anything that you want to um, so that we can all share in our learning. Okay, so if I go back to EdCamp, educational tools. Now, one, two, three, four, five. There's five videos here that I find the kids use the most. The first one is the Auto Summarizer Rewordify. The Auto Summarizer, if you take an article or a 
couple paragraphs and you put it into the auto summarizer and you hit the summarizer key, it will summarize the main points. And it makes it a lot easier for the kids just to get the support they knew, need to figure out what the article is about. If they need just like a, a paragraph or a couple sentences and you hop, copy and highlight that and you put it in Rewordify, it just changes the wording so it's it breaks it down for better understanding. Now, if there's a lot of text, like a, a paragraph, and it's difficult text, what I sometimes do is I'll copy and put it in auto summarizer, and then I'll take what it auto summarizes and I put it into Rewordify. Google tools, voice typing, spelling, dictionary, translate. This is where the kids can actually speak into their microphone and it text, it types the text for them. A spelling, it has a spelling and grammar tool in Google Docs, dictionary, and a translate tool. They also have an explore tool in Google tools, which I absolutely love. Um, they can do research right from Google tools um, Google Docs and Google Slides. So if you go to Tools and you go to Explore, I recommend you looking at that. Um, the Read and Write Extension Text to Speech is an extension. This is the directions how to do it. If you highlight the text and you click on the play button, it will read the text to the student. And the voice isn't really super weird. On the Snipping Tool, this is a instructional video that shows the students how to take a snipping of a picture on the web and insert it into their project PowerPoint slides. Um, voice recording tutorial, they can use it for a podcast, they can use it for recording their assignment. In Academic Sport, I have used it for students to record their oral reading fluency practice. Um, and that way I can do the running records on my own time. Again, I have a sharing of educational tools. If you have any ideas, please open up and share an idea. We would love to hear it. This is how to type math symbols in Schoology. This is a creation of an editable, editable, I have a hard time with that word, I'm sorry, Google slide using a PDF as your background. Now, when I showed you the agenda, how you can, how you click on and you are able to edit it, if you use this direction, you, that goes away unless you, et, unless you add um, text boxes. The bookmark with the tech tools is a list of software that the students can use in their classrooms to support their learning. On the right hand side, it includes um, the Auto Summarizer Rewordify, and I believe it, it includes the Google tools. And so it keeps everything in one place. And on the left hand side, it has access to Gale resource website, icon, and the URL addresses for PowerSchool and Schoology. So this is this folder. And then the last folder I want to look at is This lesson is made with Google Slides. I'm finding that I love Google Slides because not only can you make them as an editable, editable worksheet, but you can also upload it in Schoology as an assignment, which makes it really easy to follow and keep everything organized. Now here, see how you can't click on anything but where you have to put your information or your answers. This is the directions I put in the previous folder. Okay, so that you, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Like here, what I like is they have a circle, you drag it over to the answer. Okay, so there's different you can just put in the answers. Okay, there's visuals, a whole bunch of things you can do. 
So there's that one. And then the next one is also used, made using slides. Now this one I've used in a, academic support and this one will give the structure, the definition, it gives clues of how to find what the text structure is being used. So the first one gives a good example for the rest of them. So here you're going to listen to the video and then you're going to highlight the text structure. You're going to pull over the color and you're going to put it over the answer. Then you're going to write a one sentence summary to summarize the video and why you chose the text feature. Now, not only could you do it for language arts, but you could do a lot of different language arts with this. You could do poetry and have different questions. You could have rhetorical devices and do it here. You could do text pieces. You could use this for science and have like a short embedded video with different answers here with them having to explain. Um, U.S. history, you could have a mini video about a historical event and have what is, you know, the main idea and then give evidence of why you picked that. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this particular one. Now the next two, I made two different versions. So the first one I'm going to show you is for higher level students. So I'm going to show you a differentiation that I did for this particular assignment. Okay, it's still loading. But you can see that, okay, ethos is pink, pathos is green, and logos is blue. So they're going to use the highlighting tool to go down here. And they're going to highlight the words that make them understand which rhetorical device is being used in the paragraph. Then they're going to explain it over here. Now, if you notice the words highlighted in yellow, remember in the previous folder, we talked about rewordify. This is what I did to this paragraph, and this is what's happened. So it took this paragraph and reworded it. Now, I believe I put this into auto summarize and then I did it into rewordify because these are very um, tough vocabulary for the students. So if I go to the next one, this one, oh, you know what? I want to show you one other thing I did over here. Another thing you can do to make the students more accountable for their learning is I know my name's here, but their name could be here, is in the do now for this particular lesson, they were given the definitions of ethos, pathos, and logos. So in a comment, they can insert a comment and they could put it right here with the three definitions and that way they don't have to go back and forth. And that's another strategy they can use. Okay, so then over here, I put in the definition. I gave more specific written information. And another thing that I did is I highlighted the words of the rhetorical device so that they know what it is. Now they have to take the words and use the rewordify words and explain why it's logos with evidence from the quote. And I also cut back the number of paragraphs that they had to do. And the last one I want to show you, now I'm just starting to work on this. I'd hope to finish it, but that did not work. Let's see, I'm trying to get it to go to Google Slides. Oh, I have to go, hold on. There we go. And this is a Google Slide. Now, when I'm done, I will have to make this into an editable, Google slide presentation. This is still in PowerPoint. So I'm, once I do all my background work, there's a way to put it into Google Slides where the only thing they can click on is the edible portion of the slide. 
but that's a whole nother lesson. But know that that is um, something that is available. Okay, so this is would be I would be considering this an interactive lesson for the student. It's scaffolded. It has educational technology tools embedded. So just to give you an idea of what that would look like. The first slide, I always like to start with a rubric. I like them to read and review and know how they're going to be graded. Then the first thing they really know how to really need to know how to do is a video playback support and a Zoom screen tool support. So they need to know that they can use the Zoom so they can see this and they can play it back when you'll see in the next slide, they have a small video embedded. Now, you do not use this in presentation mode. You keep this in slide mode. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see why, because you want to be able to have them type in. Now, again, they can, where it is right now, they can edit everything. Um, when you see, when you go to a Google slide and you make it editable, the only thing they can click on and edit is this. So know that there, again, there is a process to that. Sticky notes, I focus on the first thing they have to do. So that's lesson one, this would be lesson two. So the next day when they come in, they're due now would to be watch the video and learn an educational technology tool. Then they are going to have the timer they can use for support. And then after they do this and we have a share out, we'll watch, before we watch the video, they'll click on the Padlet and we'll do a brainstorming session about what a change maker is. I love Padlet, the kids love it. Now, the other thing, part of this slide is they have a brainstorming task. I usually have tasks or task. So they have to watch this, then they have to fill in the chart. If I have a hint to make things easier, not do it for them, but give them a hint, they can use that here. In the video, I demonstrate within two to three, three to four minutes, how, how to complete this task. You really don't want it to be more than three or four minutes because you'll lose the students. So that's why you break it up into a couple different videos and you have thinking in between. So what you do is then I'll just keep adding slides until the whole writing essay progress process is done. And also I have one of the slides will have a Google Doc copy and paste, open copy and paste into their Google Drive and they share it with me so I have a way to give them support all the way through the process. So we're going to go back to at camp. And the last thing I would like to really focus on is to brainstorm and share of ideas. Do you have questions that you would like to talk with each other about? Um, this is just the last minutes. I think we got like 10 or so minutes. I would really like you to be able to just share ideas, um, whether you share a lesson idea or a different kind of instructional strategy, that is perfectly fine. I hope you learned something from th this EdCamp session, and I thank you for attending.